You don't need your Keto Conosol shampoo anymore. You actually only need meat. And let me tell you why. So this is my experience with hair loss. I started experiencing hair loss in 2019 and one of the first things I noticed when I started to experience hair loss was an itchy scalp. I could not get my hands off of If I was doing any sport, making any physical effort, that itchiness would just flare up. And actually the first video I took of my hair loss in 2019, you can see right here, you can see these small red dots or spots that I have on my scalp. And these were the ones that would itch a lot and would make me go insane. Then I took medication, I took finasteride, minoxidil, I was doing derma rolling, worked wonders for my hair loss but I kind of still had that itch a little bit here and there, not as persistently as when I did not take any medication at all. Now it's been forward four years later, I've now been medication free for the last seven months. This is how my scalp is looking right now. And as you can see, again, I have these red dots that just won't disappear, and my scalp has been so itchy. And I couldn't help but think that there must be some sort of inflammation in my scalp that's causing these spots to flare up. And like I've said in my previous videos, I've talked about these spots being a sign of DHT. You know, there's an inflammation and DHT goes there as a response to that inflammation. But from you guys in the comments section, I heard about Keto Conosol Shampoo. And apparently, the Keto Conosol Shampoo can help with itchiness, it can help with dandruff, and that got me thinking a little bit. Why do people use Ketoconosol shampoo. What is Ketoconosol shampoo? It's an antifungal medicine. I mean, that deserves a spin. So it even says the Ketoconosol can help reduce male pattern baldness by increasing hair density as well as lowering DHT. And like I said, I've personally never used Ketoconosol, but if Ketoconosol shampoo is now a antifungal medication, why don't we focus on the fungal overgrowth or infection that is present in the scalp? But how do we know that we have a fungal infection to begin with? Personally, I know that I have a fungal infection because, I, like I've talked about before, this is fucking disgusting, I do have I have toenail fungus on one toe and I have an athlete's foot, so I know that there's yeast, candida or fungus present, at least an overgrowth and we can also tell by the scalp. By just searching on Google, it's really hard to get a holistic perspective on fungus and what it can do on your scalp. Most articles seem to refer to seborrheic dermatitis, and this is what your scalp could look like if you're suffering from fungal infection. And you see, it's not just like one thing, it can be a variety of different types of rashes, shapes of the rashes, etc. So you can have anything from like really severe examples of this to very mild versions of this. When you search on Google on these symptoms and how to cure them, every single website I've been to suggests either using ketoconazole or using some type of oral tablet in order to get rid of the fungal overgrowth. But no one is talking about the lifestyle changes that are available to us right now that can help us eliminate all that fungal overgrowth. And the more I'm learning about alternative medicine, the more I am convinced that the external, the physical, is the body's way to communicate with us what is going on on our inside. Not just when it comes to our mental health, but also when it comes to, let's say, overgrowth of fungus. Because I took the harshest drug for my toenail fungus three times, and one should be enough, but I took it three times and I still didn't get rid of my toenail fungus. And I kept wondering, okay, am I gonna have this for the rest of my life? But now I'm so thankful that I actually never got rid of it, because it would have only gotten rid of the symptom and not the actual root cause, the internal problem that I need to fix. So I believe that my toenail, but also my hair, is my body's way of telling me that there's something not right going on here. And if I was just to focus on, let's say, the symptoms, in this case my toenail fungus, but also my very itchy scalp, then I'm basically just curing symptoms, prolonging the inevitable, but also never actually solving the problem, and therefore the problem may grow bigger than what it is right now, and I may get my toenail fungus back, but also my itchy scalp. But this brings me to the solution. How do we solve a fungal overgrowth by making lifestyle changes? And I got one simple word for you. Keto diet. But the keto diet 
is a diet that is low in carbs and high in fats and moderately high in protein. And it's usually a diet that a lot of fat loss experts uh, seem to suggest, but it actually has a lot of health benefits too. I tried it between May and June 2021 and I lost 8 kilos, not that I need to lose weight, but I just wanted to experiment with the keto diet to see if it actually reduced inflammation in my body. So what happens is rather than your body using carbohydrates to fuel itself with energy, what it does is it burns fat, so you create ketones and your body basically converts fat into energy. So by doing that, all the fat storages are being used in your body to convert that into energy too. So you lose a lot of body fat. But the super interesting thing about keto is it actually kills fungus because fungus needs sugar from plants. So by eliminating all carbs, you're actually doing yourself a huge favor if you're suffering from fungal overgrowth. And if you wanna dig even deeper, here's where the carnivore diet comes in which is what I'm currently doing. I probably wanna do it until the end of the year, so about 60 days, and then I'm going to reconsider if I want to add something or not. But anyways, let's keep it to the topic because I can go on a tangent every day of the week. It's only animal cells in the carnivore diet, so I ate a lot of fatty meat, I ate red meat, I ate eggs, butter, salt, and water, and I have some tea. By eliminating all the sugars, your fungus can't survive. So you're slowly but steadily starving the fungus. And on YouTube, there's a woman who actually killed her candida in 43 days using a carnivore diet. Already I can notice a huge difference on my scalp as well as a ton of other health benefits, which I won't get into in this video because then it's gonna be too long. But when it comes to the carnivore diet and your scalp health, I think there's been a huge difference. Like now when I run my, my hand through my hair, sure, there's a little bit of dandruff coming out, but I mean, there's nowhere near the amount that I had about a week ago and even two weeks ago. So I can really suggest this for you guys if you wanna get rid of your ketoconazole and you wanna solve that fungal overgrowth production forever. 